Welcome to our ongoing discussion of types of structural action. We we're talking about bending. In our previous video, we talked about um, shaping the cross section to respond logical, logically to bending stresses. And now we want to talk about shaping the profile of the structural member. So you'll recall we said there are three major issues that we worry about in anything that's in bending. We worry about shear capacity, which we discussed in the previous uh, video, moment capacity, which we touched on relative to how we're shaping the cross section, and stiffness, and we mentioned the fact that too much movement can be distracting to people or can cause cracking of brittle elements in the system. Um, we're going to start by sort of focusing on this issue of moment capacity. In a simple span beam like this under a uniform load, we have an internal influence we call the moment, and the moment is what is producing those bending stresses that we've been talking about. High compression on the top and high tension on the bottom, which can result in this kind of uh, failure mode where there's a tensile fracture on the bottom or some kind of compression failure on the top. Uh, that moment distribution in the simple span beam is a parabola that peaks at the center, which is why the failure always occurs either right at the center or very close to it. And if it doesn't occur right at the center, it's because the material is not perfectly homogeneous. So the fact that this is parabolic means uh, it would be advantageous to us to shape the member profile to fit this parabola. We don't typically go to that much trouble in beams, but in this particular building, which we've mentioned before, there's a tension member across the bottom here, and there's an arch element here, and those two things together are working to span uh, roughly 300 feet. And in this case, they chose to give this arch the perfect parabolic shape to match this shape up here. As I mentioned, we don't usually do that for beams, but we do make some compensation. For example, in this particular structure, we have glass mullions that are spanning from the top of this opening down to the bottom. And you'll notice those mullions have been given the greatest structural depth at the center and less structural depth at the bottom. Um, they've been cut on a straight line rather than a parabolic shape because that's a lot easier. It's a lot easier to cut glass on a straight line. In fact, most of the materials we can shear or cut in some way along a straight line a lot easier than we can cut a curve. Uh, here's another example. This is the Phoenix Airport. These are plate girders. Um, these huge pieces of uh, material that represent the web members have been cut on a giant shear. And then flange material has been welded to top and bottom, and then there are some, also some stiffeners which are put in because the sheet material out of which the web is made is very thin and uh, vulnerable to buckling. Uh, the key thing here is the depth of the structure here, or uh, on this beam for example right there, is much deeper than near the perimeter, which reflects that fact that the bending stresses are going to be more severe near the middle. Um, in the case of cantilevers, uh, we actually have a very similar shape because the worst moment is occurring at the center of the beam. So here the greatest depth is there and a uh, much shallower depth out near the perimeter. And again, these are steel plates that have been cut with a shear. Uh, in this case, there was no flange material. The loads on the roof were light enough that uh, even though we have compression on the bottom of this and we would be concerned about buckling, rather than weld a flange material on the bottom, uh, they've just made the plate a lot thicker. And they've been able to get away with that and do it fairly efficiently um, because the loads are quite small. Um, there's another motive for not putting those flanges on the bottom, which is that that's a great place for birds to roost and you don't want to have birds overhead in a facility like this anywhere you have people walking underneath. Okay, so this is another example. We have a sort of cantilevered element that's coming across along this vertical. So the vertical is nice and thick at the top and then this cantilever comes off and it's thin in the middle and it's thick down where the moment is the worst. 
and this is tending to bulge outward so we have a lot of tension on the outside we have a lot of compression on the inside um, and this thing has been shaped to handle that this is also a very logical structure for resisting wind load because under wind load these joints are also heavily stressed and the thickness of those joints is beneficial for both wind and gravity resistance. Uh, for shallower structures that are behaving the same way, we may not taper it to a point at the center, but we might accept the notion that this thing has got tension on the outside here, compression on the inside, and it's cantilevering out to this point and likewise it's cantilevering over on this side off of this thick joint and then from here across it's a simple span beam and it's been made deep near the middle so uh, wind is not so much a factor here and as a consequence we can get away with some fairly shallow portions there but if you uh, sort of imagine this with a wind load in this direction this is not a zero moment point. It might be zero moment under gravity loads, but not under wind loads. So there still needs to be some thickness here to account for that. But the overall profile here has been governed by gravity forces, and gravity forces want this to be thick right there, and thick right there, and thick right there. But under gravity loads, it can be pretty thin down here, uh, here, here, and there. So it goes thin, thick, thin, thick, thin, thick, and thin. This just shows a close-up of that connection. And you'll notice, by the way, that there are many, many more bolts occurring up near the top here because that's uh, ind indicative of the fact that we're trying to transfer tension across the top under gravity loads. There are fewer bolts on the bottom. This will go into tension on this side under wind loads, but the structure is heavy enough that the, the reverse loads are not as severe. And this just shows that uh, very small dimension down at the base, which is indicative of the fact that there is no intention of absorbing much uh, bending influence at that location. So this concludes our um, video on shaping the profile of bending elements.